It's mailbag time here on the Raiders Report, and today's show is presented by the Fetch Rewards app. You can go ahead and scan receipts, convert them into gift cards, find out why this app is used by over millions of people and regarded as the number one rewards app on the internet. It's free to download chatsports.com slash fetch. Just use code Raiders. It's going to get you 3,000 bonus points. Now, when we do these mailbags, we do them on Tuesday when I go live, so please keep that in mind if anything does end up changing. All right, we got John. What up, John? Who do you think the Raiders would have gotten as head coach if they didn't get Josh McDaniels? It's an interesting question. It does sound like it was McDaniels from all along. All the old Jim Harbaugh rumors, it sounded like Harbaugh was more interested in the Raiders than the Raiders were ever interested in Harbaugh. Apparently, he was asking for $9 million a year, which kind of makes some sense because Gruden was making 10 mil. But uh, if they wouldn't have gotten Josh McDaniels, honestly, man, I don't know if there would have been anybody else because from what it sounds like, it was always McDaniels from the very, very start. Let's go to Devin from Austin. Who should be the Raiders' top target in the draft? I mean, at pick number 22, if you were to tell me, now again, most realistic pick at 22 that would be the best for the Raiders in terms of team need, I'm going to go ahead and say Jordan Davis, defensive tackle out of Georgia. His flexibility, his versatility on that line is going to be really, really helpful for the Raiders, whether they want to run a 3-4, a 4-3, whatever defensive scheme you have, Jordan Davis is going to be successful. He's a hardworking kid, and I would love to see what he would be able to do And a defense ran by Patrick Graham. And honestly, man, even with Dave Ziegler, Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels at front, Let's go to Mason X. Should we trade for Russell Wilson? It depends what you're going to trade for, right? I mean, you got to give up probably a first-round pick. If you guys want to see a trade idea that I posted on my Twitter from Paul Gutierrez, it's at MitchellRen365. And by the way, I love Derek Carr, but for the people who voted that Derek Carr was a better quarterback for Russell Wilson, I get that you guys like DC, but honestly, man, it's 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 really not even close. It's, it's Russ every single day of the week. Let's go to the greatness of the Raiders. Which position is imperative for the first round pick, defensive tackle or wide receiver? I, again, I'm going to go to best player available, right? If Jordan if Jordan Davis is there at DT, I'll take Jordan Davis. If Penning is there from Northern Iowa, who I'm really starting to like at right tackle, I would consider that. If you know, you're looking at some wide receivers still on the board, it depends what you do in free agency because if the Raiders don't address the right tackle need, then right tackle becomes an even bigger need in the draft. But I do think the Raiders address right tackle in free agency because you can't go into the draft just hoping that one of those tackles fall to you. All right, y'all, I got a random question, but I don't know about you. I've been craving cereal a whole bunch recently, and I want to know what your favorite kind of cereal is. Like, when I was a kid, I remember eating Cocoa Puffs a lot, Reese's Puffs a lot, Lucky Charms. I did eat a lot of Wheaties, but that's because my dad, I think, was trying to get me on a Wheaties cover. <laughs> I ate a ton of uh, Fruity Pebbles was a co common one. The older and older I got, this is kind of weird, but the cereal that I like the most now is Captain Crunch, but I eat it with coffee instead of milk. I'm a big coffee drinker. I do Captain Crunch with coffee. I know. It sounds kind of weird, but let me know. Yeah, no, seriously, I, I get coffee, cold, cold coffee. Pour it in a bowl, and then I get some Captain Crunch. That's that's kind of how I like it. But what I want you guys to do is let me know what your favorite kind of cereal is, and then the next time you're out shopping for cereal or honestly anything you get, I want you to save that receipt and scan it with the Fetch Rewards app. How do you do it? Chatsports.com slash Fetch is how you download the app. And I'm going to show you guys how simple it is to just overall use this app here. So what you see right here to the right of me, is me looking at all the points that I have and just trying to dissect all of it. You can use code Raiders for 3,000 bonus points. Now, what I'm doing over here on the right is showing you guys how you can redeem your points to go ahead and get some awesome gift cards here. So we got a lot of different options from top to bottom, but if you guys want to get started with the Fetch Rewards app, it's chatsports.com slash fetch for 3,000 bonus points. Use code Raiders. You can get rewarded for all of your shopping, whether you want to go to Amazon, whether you go to Walmart or Target. we got a lot of awesome options available for you all. So that's what you see over here. Look at that. Set you up. 
get you set up. So you can earn, again, free rewards on everything you buy. And I am doing a competition here at Chat Sports. So I need you guys to have my back. For the people that just downloaded the Fetch Rewards app, awesome. For people who have had it for a long time, I want you to go to my pinned tweet. Send me a screenshot of your Fetch Rewards points. So reply to my pinned tweet with a screenshot of your points. I'm at MitchellRens365. I want to show Fetch. I want to show my bosses at Chat Sports that Raiders report is better than the Cowboys report, better than Bears now, and better than the 49ers report. So please don't let me down. Let's go to King Ching. Who else here is saving up for Super Bowl? Uh, so you're talking about the Super Bowl that the Raiders are hosting. Uh, I mean, personally, I would love to be able to go to it, but I don't think I'll be able to ever afford any Super Bowl anytime soon. Let's go to Alex Thompson. Patterson was with us. Think 2018 should have kept him. Now, yes, Cordell Patterson had some runs here and there, but um, what are you saying? I can't hear you. 2017 with the Raiders. Now, Patterson, I get it, didn't fit well, but I do think if you were able to use him in the correct way, I, I just think back then the offense was ran a lot different and was a little bit more stale. But Alex Thompson, I appreciate your question. Make sure you guys are using hashtag Raiders or you can super chat. Shout out to Castro007 for the super. Much love to y'all. I definitely appreciate it. Let's go to Angel. Which free agents should the Raiders avoid? Trent Brown at right tackle, avoid him. Antonio Brown at wide receiver, absolutely avoid him. And then, you know, you're going to be looking at some interesting other guys at the receiver position. Like, I don't want to sit here and say avoid OBJ, but if you're telling me OBJ is going to go for $16, $17, 18000000 million, or I can get Allen Robinson for nineteen twenty, OBJ is going to be a name to at least keep in mind. There's going to be some probably, I'm trying to think, some other cornerbacks like Darius Williams for the Rams. I get the fact that he's had some good PFF grades, but he's only been good next to Jalen Ramsey, and I'm definitely a believer. If you're standing next to a shutdown, lockdown corner, there's probably reasons why you look a little bit better. All right, this next one's coming in from RaiderFan808. I don't trust Jonathan Abram in coverage. Who is the top safety? <laughs> the Raiders could sign this offseason. Yeah, I definitely don't trust Jonathan Abram. And personally, he's going to be one of the guys that I'm going to try to try to make videos around trading or moving on from because I don't trust him to be in coverage and make the argument that the Raiders' defense was better without him. So in terms of the top safeties, the top two guys are probably Marcus Williams and Jesse Bates. I'd be curious to see how they fit with Merrick as another safety. If you want to go for your probably your best bang for your buck safety and most versatile to fit in a Patrick Graham type of system, I might go with Marcus May. He could play in the box. He could play free safety. He could play strong safety. Battled some injuries last year, so he might be willing to take a one-year, maybe two-year cheaper contract. So how about this, y'all? You don't trust Jonathan Abram? Well, guess what? I don't either. What is your one word to describe Jonathan Abram's football ability? The one word that I came to mind was toast. You can probably consider, uh, figure out why. I know he's a tough player. I know he brings a lot of energy. But this is another first-round boss that the Raiders went out and tried to get. I've seen enough, and I'm convinced that Jonathan Abram will never be a starting caliber safety in the league. Now, maybe they try to convert him to linebacker, but he, he just can't play safety in the NFL. Let's go to Ryan Decker. If we can't get Adams, why not try for Juju and Watkins, both for one-year prove-it deals at 10 to 12 million each. Honestly, man, I don't know how many of these players are going to go for these one-year prove-it deals because they took one-year prove-it deals last year. Now, the reason why you saw so many was because of the salary cap. It was lower than it's ever technically been in terms of overall value of contracts. Now, this year it's going up. Guys know that if they want to get paid, they can get paid this year. So one-year prove-it deals aren't really going to be too existent. And I think Juju is one of the more overrated receivers in the league. And Sammy Watkins thinks he's a lizard. Let's go to Alex Thompson. Let's not draft a tight end to block as a left tackle against defensive ends. I don't anticipate the Raiders drafting a tackle or a tight end very high if they do decide to take one. I think the more legitimate route is you obviously have Darren Waller. You have Fosmer as your top two starting tight ends. I would see them re-signing Derek Carrier, who is a free agent. And I get it. Derek Carrier is not a sexy name, but he's at least a halfway decent blocker. Uh, Durham Smythe is actually another interesting name to go out and try to get and on a cheap contract to be a blocking tight end. Rob Gronkowski, though, I'm sorry, don't see that one happening. Now, I don't know what this means, but Sam just put this on screen, and he said, subscribe to the Raiders report or else. I, 
I don't know what the or else is. I don't know exactly what that means. But if you don't subscribe to the Raiders Report, I've just been hit with or else. I know I, you guys see me on the show, but I don't get to decide when my studio time is, and I don't really get to decide too many things around here. So uh, I don't want to find out what the or else is, so please go ahead and hit that sub button. All right, let's go to this next one. It's coming in from Mark. What's it going to take to get Brandon Cooks? So Brandon Cooks, receiver for the Houston Texans. I like Cooks a lot. I Personally, I think it would be like a third, third-round pick. I know he's had some concussion issues. He's also been traded four times. He also, Josh McDaniels wanted Brandon Cooks once when he was with Tom Brady. That connection worked out really well. But again, though, like you're going to give up a third-round pick for Brandon Cooks, who's been a really solid receiver, or would you rather just go out and get somebody like, uh, you know, like an Allen Robinson, pay him type of money? I'm trying to think. Brandon Cooks probably going to make like $12.5 million this upcoming year. So third-round pick, and you got to pay Cooks $12.5 Let's go to Vengenzio Peoples. Do you think Drake London is the next Randy Moss? No. it's. I'm not really going to put the next Randy Moss on anyone. Randy Moss was a freak show of a talent. Personally, he's a top five receiver of all time. I do like Drake London's athletic ability. He reminds me, honestly, of a DK Metcalf style of dude who, big, tall athlete, can get down the field quick has unbelievable jumping ability. I am curious to see how he does with more intermediate routes, but Drake London to me could be the next DK Metcalf. Let's go to LC Raider. Mitch, would DJ Chark be a good fit? Yes, DJ Chark at 6'3", about 200 pounds. Speed serve receiver, ran a 4.3440. He did have only seven catches for 127 yards and two touchdowns last year, but that's because he got banged up. And I brought up DJ Chark's name before because I've said this. If I was somebody like Chark who's coming off an injury, I would be willing to take a one-year prove-it deal. Derek Carr has been able to show that he can turn these receivers into these one-year prove-it deals and then have them go off and be very successful. Let's go to Daniel Brown. Hey, Mitch, who are some good speed receivers we can acquire in free agency for a reasonable price? DJ Chark's probably number one. If you're talking about like elite speed type of receivers, Chark, I'm going to consider anybody that runs under like a 4-4. Chark's definitely up there. I don't think OBJ is in the terms of the speedster anymore. Deshaun Jackson would be an interesting name to think about. Will Fuller, though, I don't really want to go out and get Will Fuller. There's a lot of other possession receivers. See, Kirk to me is not, not a speedster. He's more of a possession receiver. I mean, if you're looking for a speedster, I'm probably going to go out and say it's DJ Chark. All right, y'all, where are you watching the Super Bowl? Go ahead and let me know. I was hoping to do a Raiders report show for the Super Bowl watch party. However, my bosses said we didn't get enough yes votes on my community poll, and it sounded like a lot of y'all didn't want me to go ahead and do it because it wasn't Raiders related. So I think I'm going to be watching the Super Bowl at my house. If there's anybody in Dallas, Texas, or in the DFW area, and you're going to be at a Super Bowl watch party, let me know. Give me... Give me, give me the Addy. Uh, I would love to be able to sit down and, you know, watch the game with you all. So where are you watching the Super Bowl? Go ahead let me know. I would love to be able to join you guys and uh, watch Super Bowl with you. Let's go to David Taken. What right tackle should we target in free agency or the draft? All right, so what right tackle should we target in free agency or the draft? Right tackle, it's Morgan Moses in free agency. In the draft, I'm going to say Penning from uh, Northern Iowa. A lot of the good tackles in this year's draft are left tackles. Now, there's some guys who might be tackles slash guards, but I would say true right tackle. It's Penning from Northern Iowa, but I want them to go out and get Morgan Moses. Let's go to Juicehead89. Sign Buster Screen. I'm good on that. And who would you draft? Jamison Williams, Chris Olave, or Garrett Wilson? Personally, I think Garrett Wilson's the best out of the bunch. Now, Jamison Williams might be my number one if he was fully healthy. Though, I think Chris Olave is going to be the, the best wide receiver, too. Or I think Chris Olave is the safest guy out of this list. I think Garrett Wilson might have the higher upside. But uh, I would probably say Garrett Wilson over Olave. Though, I think Olave's ability to get open is spectacular. He just needs a number one wide receiver. Let's go to carry my ball bag. Do you think Waller car relationship will impact Carr's future? There's no issues here. This was a very overblown rumor. I don't remember who started that Darren Waller and Derek Carr don't get along, but I have talked to players in that locker room, and they have told me that this entire rumor was a bunch of BS. And believe me, I love rumors. This rumor has no legs to it whatsoever. 
Let's go to Juan. I just want to say thank you, Mitch, for providing great coverage, news, and rumors keeping it coming. Thank you to the peeps in the background. Well, if you guys want to subscribe to the Raiders Report, please make sure you go and do so. We keep you guys up to date. If I was unable to get to your question, I apologize. I know we get a lot of questions, comments during our live shows. So you can always hit me up on IG. You can always hit me up on Twitter at MitchellRens365. But my DMs are only open on IG because that's where I want you guys to and uh, basically give me all your questions. Make sure you stay up to date on news, rumors. If anything else happens crazy this week, I'll do my best to keep you guys up to date.